here in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Financial Columnist and Money Color Commentator. This week on The Biz, Employee Stock Ownership Plans. And on today's show, our very special guest, Coretti Tuioti, nationally recognized ESOP expert right here on The Zone. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And day five, Coretti's been walking us through. <laughs> ESOPs, and I mean, thank you for coming on our show. Day My five, pleasure. how are you surviving? Oh, barely. <laughs> now everybody says, well, Steve, this is all great. But you're the business insurance zone. Where's the insurance play here? Well, we save the best to last, and so we force you to watch Monday through <laughs> Thursday. There's actually some serious play here. Let's talk through life insurance and the applications as they tandem mm-hmm. with ESOPs. Mm-hmm. Well, Steve, that's a very good question. That's what we, we, we do. I mean, we set up all this planning so that it allows for us to be able to do the kind of things that we want to do for our clients. And in any type of insurance, when you're working with a company, Coley, you know, buy, sell, anything that you are accustomed to right now, they all have application in Mm -hmm. an ESOP. For ex- you know, the biggest, for example, is we need to cover the collateral, right? Mm-hmm. There, there is, there's a debt there, so we need, the company has an interest in, in creating a security in the event that the owner dies prematurely. So going back to your example, if the company purchases the stock from the selling shareholder for a million dollars, the company has to have the liquidity to pay in the event to the, to the, to the selling shareholder's family in the event the selling shareholder mm-hmm. dies prematurely. So there's a life insurance sale there. Now in an S-Corp, mm. the significant aspect of that is the, the company, because it's a tax-exempt trust, the premiums are essentially pre-tax, mm-hmm. right? Because it's owned, the insurance is owned by the company. So the company pays it out of its profits and it pays no taxes on its profits. So that's a huge advantage to us as advisors mm-hmm. is we have the ability to recommend something that protects the company and protects the owner and use tax advantage dollars to purchase the life insurance. So so that's one, one aspect of it. The other aspect is that all employees are essentially key employees, right? Every employee, we have to ensure, the, you know, against the risk of every employee um, dying prematurely. Mm-hmm. Well, the company has to have the cash to purchase the stock from the employee mm-hmm. because now they are an owner after the sale. So now we have the, the, the opportunity to provide key, key employee coverages mm-hmm. for all the, so all of these things, you know, looking at the 401k plan, mm-hmm. we can review the 401k plan, we can do executive benefit plan using life insurance. I mean, they're all asked, whatever you're doing today as an advisor, like I said, it has application into this type of plan. Well, I'm looking at all the possibilities here. You know, we're talking about collateral assignment for your life mm-hmm. insurance. We're talking about key man, like you just brought up, which I really thought about just for a second. You know, if I have 30, 40 employees and I have to cover that off, you know, am I doing group term? I'm doing individual? What am however I doing? Kind of coverage? You, however you want to do it. So you, you know, simplified underwriting? Can absolutely. You? Absolutely. Like I said, anything that you're doing currently, when you do an ESOP, it doesn't mm-hmm. preclude you from doing what you're currently doing. I mean, if you're an expert in, mm-hmm. in group planning, if you're an expert in executive benefit mm-hmm. planning and whatsoever, the ESOP touches all. So for example, you, you can start off by doing estate planning. Mm-hmm. Well, with estate planning, the, the ESOP has, to, we, we have to do a valuation. So that comes, comes into play because now we, we, we have tech value on the, you know, for the company, and that plays a part into the overall estate planning you're doing for the client. Mm-hmm. So that's well, isn't it true though? Also, Coretti, isn't it true that a lot of these estates, that the bulk of the estate is this business we're talking very about? True. Very true. So, so there's going to have. I, I don't see how you can do. I'm just doing an ESOP. I'm done. Thank you very much. I'm out. I think you have to now incorporate what the transaction has done to the mm-hmm. estate, and now move and pivot to the estate planning side because most of the businesses in America that we're addressing, Mm -hmm. the largest part of their estate is this business we're talking about. That's exactly right. In fact, uh, I did a plan once where we came in to do the Mm -hmm. ESOP. We were, that that was the reason why I was brought in Mm -hmm. so that we can evaluate the suitability of the ESOP for this particular client. But it turned out that what they really wanted to do was do an estate plan. Mm -hmm. But because we had gone through the valuation, we tagged the value of the company. 
-hmm. and, and that allowed for us to do the estate planning. So, so very true. The same goes for um, executive compensation, retirement planning, uh, and the owner's financial planning. They're all mm -hmm. aspects. These are all things that an ESOP touches. Now, you were saying, we were talking about this yesterday in regards to, you know, they have their own plans. They might have their own retirement plans, mm -hmm. but they need more than that. They can't, they're doing 50000 They're doing their max contributions. Oh, I love that. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. they need more than That's that. Right. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that because that it gets into our wheelhouse because a lot of our producers, a lot of our advisors that are watching, they like to do that and they go, Where? Yeah. I, I know he needs more money for retirement. Where am I going to get it? That's right. You know, all of us go through that process mm -hmm. for, with our clients. You know, we, we, we do a very thorough analysis. And at the end of the day, you know, we have the client has a target and there's a shortfall. Of, mm -hmm. of, you know, they need to save X number of dollars to meet that target. And they're looking around saying, you know what, after taxes, I, you know, most of the things I'm funding on an after-tax basis because I'm limited mm -hmm. to what I can do on a pre-tax basis. So everything, I'm, I'm funding these insurances and, and investment on an after-tax basis. So they're, they're looking at this and I, I don't have any mm -hmm. extra dollars. Well, your largest asset of your portfolio mm -hmm. is your company. Mm -hmm. What if we monetize it? And then I will go through the calculations and say, let's suppose that we value it at a million and, and, and take out the distribution from that, you know, the company's going to pay you for that. In a They're, tax advantage in way. In a tax advantage way. Mm -hmm. There you go. We mm -hmm. have just plugged it. We have just, mm -hmm. you know, fill in that gap on your estate planning or your retirement mm -hmm. planning. So that's a key to that. It's a, it's a, and I can do it with mm -hmm. the 12C, mm -hmm. HB 12C. I can, I can do it in five minutes and determine whether that's appropriate or not. And by the way, that was a shameless plug for Hewlett Packard's 12C <laughs> calculator, which we call the calculator of the fiduciary. And of course, if you're watching any of your representatives from uh, Hewlett Packard, I'd be happy to host you on the show <laughs> as a sponsor. How, how mercenary is that? Oh, wow. I love we, it. I use my HP all the time. We so. come back from the break. We're going to address a summary of it, all that we've been talking about all this week. And hey, don't forget to hop out to IULUniversity.com for the best training, education, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant. And remember, you can order today's giveaways at thebiz.tv. And we're giving away our mini manual on ESOPs. It's actually quite a nice, and really is easy to under uh, easy to read. And it's in English, easy to under. <laughs> even I got this on the first pass. And I want you to have this because I think it'll give you a dip your toe kind of idea. Do I really want to get into ESOPs? And is this a, the, the actual practice expander or the building out of my practice that I've been looking for? It could be. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not for everybody, but it might be for you. Just order it again. Happy to give it to you at thebiz.tv. And remember, before we move forward with anything we talk about, and we've been talking about things that deal with taxes, always touch base with your tax advisor first. And if you're FINRA licensed, always get your broker dealer compliance officer to sign off on it. We're talking, of, we're going to summarize the whole week's show right now. We're going to talk about all the things we've been speaking about. We usually think of ESOPs as a business succession planning issue. And it can be mm -hmm. for business. But now we're talking about the person that owns the business. And this is where I think we forget about it. We do business succession planning to continue the entity. But what about the person who started and he wants out? That's right. He's looking for an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. And so this is why we're bringing this up this week. And it could be a major way, especially after the fiscal cliff. I mean, this is built for things like this. I mean, 
for, for me, it's all about legacy planning, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, the owner is at that point where they want to say, okay, you know, I'm thinking about my employees, what do I leave for them, what do I leave for my family, and so forth. So you have an opportunity with an mm -hmm. ESOP to really set up a legacy for employees and a legacy for the owner's family. And you can make pivots either way. And, and yeah, I just want to talk to my consumer audience that's online with us right now, too. If you're an employee of a nice company that's over 20 employees, and you know they're doing $5 million, you yeah. know, or more, or no, I'm sorry, half a million dollars, right, mm -hmm. of generated revenue, you may be able to look at this as an out. If there's no suitor for the company that you work for, and you said, boy, I've always wanted to own something, this could be a great employee. We always go to the employer. That's I'm right. going direct out to the internet now and saying, hey, if you're participating as an employee of a company that could use an ESOP, and you hear this, this could be a way for you to own part of the company without any money out of your pocket. To me, that's huge. And remember, the government's all over this. They're happy with us. And we'll do the discovery. I mean, yes, they, we have the to key, find out. The key is that we will do with, with, with our advisors, with our partners, we'll come in and we'll do the discovery initially before any attorney is involved, before any CPA is involved. Mm -hmm. We'll do the discovery and we'll determine what the, the, the client's mm -hmm. objectives are. Let's you know, say what of, do they want to do? Of all the people, when you as a percentage, I know this is a little difficult to ask, but let's say for every 10 uh, uh, companies that you look at to start out as an ESOP, mm -hmm. how many of them finish or do an ESOP out of very, 10? Very, uh, I would say maybe two. So, so 20%, mm -hmm. but you're still leading with it because it's so differentiated. That's right. Okay, now, if they're doing 20% ESOPs, where are the, where's it going? Where's the 80% going? Well, m most most of them will pivot to you know we may do a defined benefit plan mm -hmm. you know maybe we'll do an executive benefit plan for whatever reasons we they, they will elect not to pursue that way mm -hmm. and, and and but that will allow us to pivot to other aspects you know again mm -hmm. as I mentioned the ESOP touches a lot of things and you can do a lot of things you know as advisors we do a lot of things mm -hmm. even with or without the ESOP so the other eighty percent will probably do an estate plan mm -hmm. they will probably do a, an executive bonus plan mm -hmm. you know maybe a section seventy nine plan um, or maybe they'll look into their four hundred one k and decide they want to do a combo defined benefit. 401k plan. I mean, there are all kinds of things. And, and guess who's involved in that planning? We are. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the attorneys who are specialists in ESOPs or CPAs who, who are specialists in ESOPs will, will not participate in that. They'll look at that and say, okay, and the client will make a decision and say, uh, I like it, but I don't think I want to mm -hmm. do it. Well, they go away, but we're involved with that planning process going forward. I, I think it's interesting, especially in our economy today, you're seeing more and more businesses looking for suitors to buy them out so the owner can retire, but they're just not getting it. The demand is not there. I think one of the new tactics for ESOPs is to start to approach the upper middle class and affluent business owners who are looking for a way to exit out and, and a strategy knowing full well the odds are I'm not going to get a suitor right, here. Right. So let's just right. start looking at ESOPs. Instead yeah. of making 20%, I predict, especially with taxes yeah. and the advantages here, this thing could bump up for every 10. Maybe you're starting to get 30 yeah. or 40%. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at this because I think the whole issue of being bought out, I mean, even in our industry, mm -hmm. independent marketing organizations, there's 800 and whatever, yeah. how many guys are just like we are. Yeah. We're running the same issue. Well, you're not. You don't think you're getting the valuation you're looking for. That's right. You're not getting a suitor to buy it. Right. You can't consolidate. Well, giving it away. Yeah, you sure. Know, I, or you're I, giving I, it too much away. You know, it's the same reason why a lot of people don't do charitable giving. Mm -hmm. You know, like a like a charitable lead trust or charitable. You know, you had, you and Ken did a a segment on that. Mm -hmm. It's because they think that gosh, I'm going to disinherit my children. If I give mm -hmm. away what I have, they don't know that that's a huge technique mm -hmm. to do estate planning and, 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 and build wealth. It's the same way with ESOPs. You know, they, it, psychologically, they think, I'm giving away my mm. inheritance to the employees. What am I going to do for my kids? Mm -hmm. I build this up thinking that I'm going to leave it for my children, but the children don't want to be, participate. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But, mm -hmm. but again, it, you know, it's that psycholo and we have to go through as, as reps, we have to take them through that psychological barrier. In a, in and a it's closely, very, very, very key. In a closely held family, oh, absolutely. where the kids are going to be the, uh, the employees, yeah, yeah. This is a great way to play. Yeah, it's we have to help them go through that barrier of giving a you know giving up something that mm -hmm. emotionally they were connected to throughout their whole lives. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't mind giving it up if the tax advantages and the leverage is huge. Mm -hmm. And I say for a lot of this needs to be. Of course, we do exploratory discovery process. Coretti will walk you through this. You're not going to be alone. He will mentor you through the first couple of cases. We'll even pre-qualify and say, oh, this isn't probably an ESOP. I'm looking for 20 employees or more and about a half a million of good revenue. 
Remember, you can watch this show and the whole week's show all on ESOPs by clicking the red on-demand video button right on our homepage at BrokersAlliance.com. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. Get in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.